characters can make or break a story. If it weren't for a great cast, many people wouldn't spend 100 hours plus in these story-driven RPGs. It's why I kept playing Persona 5, and also what kept me playing Cyberpunk 2077, despite all of the many technical difficulties. As good as the cast is, I do think that they could have been even better than what we got at release, especially when compared to what the life simulation aspects of the Persona series does for its cast. Hello everyone, welcome to Gameception, the show where we find games within games and then go deeper. Today, we are going to take a look at how Cyberpunk 2077 can learn from the way Persona 5 treats its colorful cast. So let's throw away the mask and unveil more of what Cyberpunk could show us in the future. Persona is a spin-off of the JRPG series Shin Megami Tensei. Although Persona is just a spin-off of SMT, it has actually become more well-known than SMT as a whole. The older Persona games even used to say Shin Megami Tensei before Persona in the title, but since Persona 4 Golden was released, the SMT honorific has been dropped. It seems that Atlas is slowly distancing Persona from the SMT name, but the game mechanics from SMT remain. The Persona series is broken up into two main modes of play. There is the dungeon crawling aspect that comes straight from Shin Megami Tensei, and then there is also the school life portion. It's split 50-50, half of the game you spend running around dungeons leveling up your characters and battling in a traditional turn-based style, and the other half, you go about your daily life going to school, doing jobs, and hanging out with friends. Today, we are going to take a look at the school life portion of Persona a little bit more in depth. More specifically, we are going to focus on the confidant system found in the game. The confidant system is pretty simple. At its core, it is simply the relationship you have with the other characters in the game and how it progresses. Let's break it down and find out what makes it so unique. In Persona, there are several characters known as confidants. These confidants range from your team members or your legal guardian to your homeroom teacher or the local weapons dealer. The goal with each of your confidants is to learn more about them and help them out with their problems all the while increasing your relationship with them. One of the ways that you increase your relationship with your confidants is simply to hang out with them. This can be done by just spending time with them, people watching, going to an arcade, or even hitting up the local off-brand Disneyland. Each confidant has their own story separate from the main story of the game. As you move along in their story, their confidant level goes up maxing out at 10. When you get a confidant to level 10, that person becomes something greater than just a friend. They become more like family, someone willing to help you in any way that they can. From a gameplay perspective, this means that you can get more abilities, or you can get more things from an item shop, and so on. Of course, the perks you get from hanging out with your friends can also be used during the dungeon crawling aspects of the game. This in turn makes it so that both halves of the game not only coexist seamlessly, but they support each other as well. Persona does such a great job at merging two very different concepts, and I think many different story-driven games can learn from it. Who doesn't know what Cyberpunk 2077 is at this point? From the bad to the good, I think everyone has heard something about it. If you haven't though, I will tell you the gist of it, and afterwards we can get more into the game mechanics found within. Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG developed by CD Projekt Red, the guys that made this. This game is an open world first person role playing game, an hour if you will. It is a story heavy game that focuses on choices and the consequences of those choices. The game is set in the year 2077 and is found in the unique cyberpunk genre. You could tell, they really worked hard on the title of the game. Cyberpunk's bread and butter is the story that is told through the world you experience and the characters you meet. It has an engaging main story, but the story wouldn't be near as good without the impressive world that you can explore, as well as the great cast of characters you can interact with. The formula that Cyberpunk uses to introduce characters is very reminiscent of the Persona games. The introduction of new characters to the story is very natural. While doing a mission, you may need to get help from someone who has a unique set of skills that you require. 
For example, they may already be an acquaintance of someone else in the cast and you are introduced through them. The characters never feel like they are forced into the story to complete a task, but rather just another piece of the puzzle that connects the larger picture. After you get to know these characters, you then set off to do missions with and for them. The way this works also reminds me of the Persona series. In Cyberpunk, when you first meet a character, they don't completely trust you. As you complete their missions, they get to know the player character and your relationship deepens. Depending on certain circumstances, the relationship may even evolve into a romantic relationship in a very similar way to how it does in Persona. However, unlike Persona, all you can do with these characters is complete their individual missions. You can't hang out with them, spend time playing minigames, or see the sights of Night City with them. The missions you go on with the main cast are great, but all they do is progress their story. There are also a bunch of interesting characters with smaller roles that don't get as much attention. And with that in mind, it's now time to go deeper. Let's dive into how Cyberpunk 2077 can learn from the confidant system found within the Persona series on how to improve its already great cast of characters. Whatever your thoughts on Cyberpunk 2077 may be, you can't deny that they don't have a well-written cast. This cast is so good, it can keep people playing a very unfinished game. But I think they can be a little bit better, and when you compare them to the cast found in a game like Persona 5, you know they can be better. In today's Gameception, we will be doing what we can to fix that. Using the Confidant system in the Persona series as a base, we will be crafting a DLC for Cyberpunk 2077 that will add to and improve the current character relationships found in the game. That's right, I decided that this should be a DLC rather than a brand new game. This was for a couple of reasons, one being how long the development for Cyberpunk took, and the other is mostly to improve the characters that didn't get as much love in the base game. Starting off simple, the first thing I feel that would add to what we currently have is the ability to hang out with your friends in the game. In Persona, you can do things like go to the movies with a friend or play billiards with a group of friends. The same could be done in Cyberpunk. There could be several different mini-games added that you would be able to invite other characters to do with you. Things like a simple bowling mini-game or playing laser tag together could bring more life to the cast in Cyberpunk. Along with being able to invite them to play some games, you could also have them accompany you on side missions. There was actually a bug in Cyberpunk that would let random characters stay with you after doing a mission. When you would get into combat, they would even help fight with you. Taking this a step further, each character might play a specific role when you take them out. Maybe you want to play it more stealthily. You could invite someone like Judy to play as a netrunner and disable cams. Planning on going loud? Bring along Jackie and mow down the bad guys together. Hanging out with these characters would also improve their combat ability, similar to how it works in Persona. Their stats in certain fields would go up, and they would become more useful during missions. Not only would they be gaining from this, but you would also get some perks for hanging out with them. As you level up your relationship, more things will open up to you. You may get the ability to be hidden from cameras because you leveled up your relationship with Judy. As a result of spending time with Victor, you might get access to an exclusive Ripper Dock shop, as well as discounted items. This way, each party involved would gain something from spending time together. To go a step further, we only need to look at the Persona series some more. As I mentioned earlier, each confidant in Persona has a separate side story apart from the main story. These usually deal with some problems they may be facing, and how you as the protagonist can help them out. We already see this to some extent in Cyberpunk, specifically for characters that have a greater focus. For example, Pan Am. Her story is pretty simple. She is having issues with her clan, so you go on missions with her to help build better relations with them. Pan Am isn't the only character that gets something like this, but there could be even more. A great example of this is found in the opening movie montage that plays just after the intro. This depicts V spending a lot of time with Jackie, going on missions, as well as having some fun. This is something that we could have experienced ourselves rather than just watching it. You don't get to see the relationship between V and Jackie develop as you do with the other characters, and this would be a great way to fix that. There are also a good handful of interesting characters that you don't get to see too often, or even get to know very well, that this gameception would be able to expand upon. 
The side stories you do with each character wouldn't take over or change the main story. They would be made in a way to coexist. The side stories would be there to build upon what has already been made. These side stories would rely on the main story to some extent. As is currently, you may not get to know some of these characters based on decisions you made in the main story. And as a result, you would not be able to do any of their side missions. You may also need to progress the main story to gain access to more side missions as more characters are introduced. This kind of DLC helps add to the replayability of the game. Being able to go back and see what characters you missed or what side stories you didn't do would be a great way to get players to pick the game back up. This gameception is on a much smaller scale than I've done on the channel prior, but I think that's what makes it more realistic. And I know that CD Projekt Red has a lot on their plate right now, but with the promise of future DLC, I could definitely see this happening to the world of Cyberpunk 2077. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of Gameception. Uh, we had some technical difficulties while making it, so that is why we don't see as many in real life sections. Um, it was audio issues and it was a little bit of a mess. Anyway, I also wanted to give a shout out to our Patreons who were able to follow the development process of this Gameception in real time. Over there, you can also see how I made the Cyberpunk 2077 Gonks and Chooms DLC logo. Stuff like that and more is available on our Patreon, so if you want to learn more about how we made our videos, feel free to go check it out. Also, if you like the video, feel free to subscribe and like it. We appreciate it. Thank you again, everybody, and as always, keep it rad.